Good morning. This is Dr. Carlson, Honolulu, Hawaii, God's Wondrous Paradise. I thank you for continuing to join us for a continuing series on implant infection removal or implant rejection. Uh, we just removed the zirconium implants in space number 28, excuse me, 20 and 19. Um, you've seen that in the video, and I'd like to show you the um, specifics at least in a format of uh, visuals in this report about that condition. The implants were put in about two and a half years ago. Uh, they loosened progressively. Uh, he did not have severe pain, but uh, subsequently he could not chew, obviously. And um, he had a malodorous condition and an exudate or a fluid coming out from around the gums. It was quite uh, tasteless, untasty. Um, bad tasting. So I'd like to show you, I'm going to step behind the camera again to show you the representation of the x-ray condition, then also a photograph of the implants taken out after I'd removed them, and then the pathology report. Again, we don't advise this procedure. Eventually the body will reject all foreign bodies. It's a delayed foreign body reaction, I believe, but um, we call it peri-implantitis. Um, similar to periodontal disease, it can affect the entire body. So let me give you the report. This is a uh, photograph of an x-ray that had been taken. It shows the implant posts is made of zirconium placed into the jawbone. This is the jawbone running here, but you can see the uh, loss of the what we call the apical crest and also the periradicular bone or the peri-implant bone. Uh, this, all this is denuded. This outlines the darkened area around it that can, actually represents the fibrous connective tissue and the granulation tissue and the bacteria quite often that are present. Uh, so I will go now to the photograph of the post-treatment Photograph, you see here the posts. This is a poorly made, constructed cantilevered bridge or some type of a splinted bridge. This is the portion of the fibrous connective tissue, the granulation tissue, the bone, and the report is as follows. It's called, called periapical granuloma, but it's more than that. It was a periapical abscess. It had the following, we call it periimplantitis, apical periimplantitis, about zirconia implants number 30 and, uh, excuse me, 28, uh, 19 and 20. So anyway, this is what the report was about. Granulation and fibrous tissue, marked acute and chronic inflammation, actinomyces are present, and it had reactive bone. This condition is... Uh, Systemically not a good condition. It affects the kidney, liver, bowel, brain, the whole circulatory system, the lymphatic system. And if you know the relationship between the uh, meridians and those implants that sat on the lung, large intestine, and stomach spleen meridian. So I would not suggest that uh, people do implants, although sometimes they seem to work, but eventually they will degrade to the point where they'll have to be removed and then you can lessen also the oral systemic impact from the infection in the jaw that can cause very severe systemic conditions that you may not be even looking at in terms of the oral cavity. So we'd like to conclude this report and thank you for joining us. Uh, we'll continue to report from time to time on our progress with root canals and or implants and the advisability to stay away from them like the plague. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Yokata ne, which means we send the seeds of light to you. That's a Japanese word, yokata ne. Thank you so much.